Who does? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm too easy myself. Yeah, looks good. I like it higher. It'll hide our our old guts and chins. I'm getting them, Mr. Welch. I'm getting the 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 under chin here. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going through that crisis. Me and my best yeah, friend. Yeah. We're like, what is this? Why isn't this going right? My grand, one of my grandchildren said something to me one time. How come your face just goes straight down? When they're when they're young, yeah. right? They'll say yeah, they'll say whatever. They'll they'll be so honest. What's going on, guys? We are live with Mr. Welch, uh, the planning principle. Planning principle. We can start off with that term. What the heck does planning principle mean? Um, and we're gonna get into that. But first, for those of you who are wondering, uh, who is this ridiculously good-looking gentleman uh, next to me here? We ran into each other at. Uh, Parkinson's walk, walk uh, as well, but um, one of, for those who may not know, uh, we got, we can look in here, Ms. Rose, is still recording. Okay, okay. This will go, that baby's going to go in and out. Um, who exactly are you, sir? Uh, maybe a quick, quick update, quick brief um, about yourself. Uh, I really hate that question because uh, there's so many things you can say, but uh, why don't we start, maybe the timeline at the beginning, Mr. Welch, so Currently, you're uh, president of the Silicon Valley Educational Foundation. No. 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 Okay. Correct me. I work there sometimes. Okay. Oh, oh, director of operations. Yeah. See, sometimes. I did some homework. Yeah. Okay. And and many hats. I think. Thirty-five years in the Bay and educating. You were uh, a principal at one point at Santa Teresa. Yeah, correct. Uh -huh. um, how would you define yourself, sir, to Joe Schmo, who's just seen you for the first time? Well, I guess I'm an educator. I'm an educator, it. a citizen of Silicon Valley. Um, grew up here, went to San Jose State. Um, so this is this is my place. Yes, sir. And uh, we appreciate that. I got some really cool questions for you guys. And look at my first guest to bring an awesome diagram. We'll get to that uh, as well. Um, so we know what you're you're doing now, Mr. Welch. If we could just, you know, before we get into the education value for you guys, if you could briefly just, um, I always love giving the story, the the timeline. Um, originally from here, um, I grew up in Redwood City, went to Sequoia High School. Sequoia, you know, our, our rivals in the second round of CCS one year. Good school mm -hmm. in Redwood City, and then um, so tell, tell me a little bit about the story. Uh, Mr. Walsh, the, the journey from Sequoia um, and uh, thinking way back. So Sequoia's done, high school's done. What year? What graduating class? Oh, I have to tell you that too. <laughs> 1958. So his 21st birthday will be next year. <laughs> and and uh, so, you know, I think this is important because a lot of, you know, kids out there trying to, you know, figure out the journey and figure out exactly what they want to do. And I was always told, you know, um, ask those coming back. Mr. Yeager, Ken, how are you? Uh, our Santa Clara County uh, Supervisor, Ken Yeager. No, he just jumped on Facebook uh, ah. live. Mr. Welch here. But uh, guys, we're recording on a laptop here. Sorry if it's choppy over there. We're doing our best. Jane, how are you? Um, if you ever hear me cut anything off, it's because people are jumping on the Facebook live. So I'll say their names. But we just left off with uh, Mr. Welch. She was giving us some background. He graduated from uh, Sequoia. We won't say what uh, year if you missed that. And I was talking about... Um, you know, ask those coming back. If you want to figure out your career, you want to figure out your journey, ask people with experience who've kind of, uh, you know, been through uh, life and so forth. So when you're at the undergrad stage, Mr. Welch, wh what, what, did you, what did you pick up? Because we all don't know what the heck we're going to do at that point, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when I was a, a, an undergrad, I just went to school and figured um, somehow this is all going to work out. And, uh, you know, I didn't have it clearly in mind when I graduate. I'll apply for a job and I'll get a job and I'll have a career. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot about that since then. But mm -hmm. that's that's where that's where I started. I just mm -hmm. did what everybody did. Right. And did you, did you switch majors at all or what, what did you kind of... Nope. Start with okay, no. and then what was uh, uh what school did you decide? San Jose State. Oh yeah, that's right, San Jose, San Jose State. State. Yeah. And uh, uh, grad school. Uh huh. Okay, and did you stay through San Jose State for that yep. as well? Yeah. And then that takes me into 
urban leadership, which yeah. I found very interesting. Um, was that an existing program already? How did, how did that all come up? That's uh, uh, that's interesting. It's, let's see, I was a uh, the principal at Santa Teresa High School and an area director when that started. And so, some people uh, who I knew at San Jose State, uh, Dr. Marcia Speck and Dr. Marty Feldman, they um, they envisioned this program for to train. There mm-hmm. weren't enough school administrators. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Many of the programs for school administrators weren't really strong programs. You know, they read books about what Dewey said in, in the But no, no feeder programs. No feeder oh. programs, no sort of integrated, no looking at what does education look like in the 21st century. And, and, uh, and not, it was in a university, not in a school. Mm. And so the Urban High School Leadership Program, um, I was in the east side then, so we mm. were a prime target, mm. and I knew these folks, so um, they asked me to to join them as a way of bringing east side teachers who were interested in becoming educational leaders into the program. So we did that, and, and so what happened is we would meet, not even at the university, which is not always a welcoming place to go, but right. um, someplace that was easy to park, and um, not during the day when people were working, and then the action was would mostly happen in their schools when they would take on projects and work together to get so, so such a such a powerful program because you're really shaping our minds I love the idea but, but how the heck do you come up with a curriculum that was probably the next question sure right and then what what is that versus standard so if, if you finish urban leadership program would that give you your credentials yes or, yes or, okay yes. and a master's degree okay and a matter of fact Chris Funk, the superintendent of Eastside Union High School District, was a student in that program. Many, many were, right? Yeah. So that obviously saw that was a great idea. Um, were all the credentials the same? You're immediately fit to be at the minimum level of principal or a teacher? No. Uh, the seniority will work your way up from there? How would, yeah, well, you, you know how it works. The credential enables you to be a school administrator, which is a particular job. You could still be a teacher. You you don't have to do that. And we had people who just came because they wanted to learn. I I can think of one right now, a lady, great, wonderful person who just wanted to learn more about educational leadership. And then she went back to the classroom, but later she went on and became a a school principal. I can see that because you're always a teacher at heart. I'm sure when you have to do the administrative role, you start to miss the classroom, right? And you got to tread that line I've talked to Mrs. Kelly about is how to be a good bad cop and then how to, you know, decide who's good cop, uh, bad cop. And then obviously you have assistant principals upon principals and somebody is always designated as the disciplinary. But at the same time, it's so needed the same way we need police officers and laws or to be right. chaos. Right? right. How do we and we're molding our, our, our youth, a very diverse youth that's. Um, you know, uh, positive things could be going on at home or negative things, you know, and, and just trying to help them be better human beings, right, is the overall uh, goal uh, with that. So so when Urban um, Leadership SJSU is done, uh, is that with the, the principal streak started with you at Santa Teresa, or did you teach a little bit? Or? After that, um, I, I was a... Uh, um uh, a management, I had a management job at, at Independence High School of mm. the state and federal programs. We were just talking about that, yeah. Uh-huh. And then I, I became a, an assistant principal there at Independence High School nice. and then um, and then principal at Santa Teresa. Was it 76 or the 76ers at that time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was. Okay, okay. Right. I guess that. 76 the is when the school opened. Oh, okay. Got it. Right. So that, that's when I ended up right. choosing uh, that. Uh, and World, and I don't know how far ahead... This is this is probably right before Evergreen, but you uh, all of a sudden do a whirlwind and help Mr. Joe Cotto out, who uh, runs for state assembly, mm-hmm. wins, and you go from being an educator to what the heck is a legislative director for those who don't know. Wow. And I answer these questions in like layman's terms in case the listener you know has no idea as well. We have to assume that. Um, yeah, um, so. I actually left the district at the same time Mr. Cotto did when Mr. Cotto retired. 
He ran. He, he was a superintendent. He was a superintendent. He ran for the uh, assembly in this area, and I worked on his campaign. He said I had been a principal for him. He said, "What are you doing?" Because I had just retired, and I said, "What do you want me to do?" And he said, "Help me." <laughs> so um, we worked on the campaign. He won. Um, I went to Sacramento with it. Was very tricky. I had a family. Sacramento yeah. is 125 miles away. Yeah. But we made it work. Yeah. Um, and then. You know, our agenda was about education, and it was a very humbling experience that getting meaningful th things done in mm. Sacramento is very hard. The more important it is, the bigger the pushback mm. from somebody um, seemed to be. And so yeah. we would have, you know, maybe 15 or 20 bills a year, and a dozen of them would be about education, and, and um, we, didn't, we didn't change the world. Right, right, right. But, but somebody has to try, right? right? You have to do that. Because I feel like in that world, obviously a whole different uh, universe. But uh, it was interesting that, so of like uh, Osh, for example, he's been on this show um, of D27. We have several, uh, I want to say five, or uh, I could be wrong, don't quote me, six of state assemblymen. So, but your guys' task was specifically education. Was that because of Mr. Cotto's background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was specifically why he wanted <clears throat> But we to... didn't, it wasn't just ed education, but primarily that was our focus. And that's what the legislative director does. Right, that's, that's what I was asking, <clears throat> what's your day-to-day? -day? Right. So, you know, in the summer, um, before the summer even, we would talk the whole team, mm -hmm. you know, there's a team of us, um, talk about what we're interested in next year, what worked and didn't work last year, where we ought to go, and we would come up with some ideas. Mm -hmm. And then the legislative director takes those ideas to the next level and writes them up, and then finally you decide, okay, this is the package of bills we're going to carry this mm -hmm. year. And um, then... Only so, then we present it. Oh, and then does it go to then it goes, mediator? Then it goes to the legislative um, council who, the, who writes it in... Educ educational ease, legal and then terms. It goes <laughs> through the process of the committees, um, and then to the floor, and then uh, we were in the assembly. Then we'll go to the other house, and then the job of the legislative director, in part, is to follow that. You mm -hmm. know, um, and when there's a hearing, you've got to get the people to testify, and you have to make sure you're clear. When somebody's upset about the bill, they don't, when they're not clear about it, or they're Which not sure they happen. like it. Somebody's going to say something when it comes out of budget. <laughs> Right. Then they come in, they want to sit down and talk, and mm -hmm. then if you can find a way to, gee, I never thought of that, maybe we could tweak it a little bit, and then you can amend the bill to try to make it everybody happy, So, so seldom. So, right. So the seed of the plant you just described in that initial conference room is essentially brainstorming with that team of what you feel will be re relevant or what's needed for our youth, and that was perfect. That tied into my next question. I was going to ask you, you know, what do you feel that we need to see the most? Obviously, those are two different time periods, 2017 uh, and now. Um, how does one, how does one uh, brainstorm and just say, oh, I got it. We need this. There's so much to be done, right? So how do you, for somebody out there might be listening who might be sitting in the same seat, right? how do you prioritize? Obviously, you, you got help and things that are going on and budgetary issues. How does one... I, it's great, regardless you're making positive change, you know. Um, you obviously have to have a brainstorming session. You have to say, what is, let's come up with five ideas that really benefit our youth. What is priority, though, given this? Right. And at the same time, look at a realistic budget. What are they not going to throw out the door? Exactly. Right? Um, was was that essentially the, the mind? What, what year was this, for example? This was... It was in, the election was in 2004, so he was in office... Actually, the beginning of 2005 until 2010. That's three two-year terms he was there. Right, right. <laughs> so this is 2000. Okay, got it. And then Evergreen started in 2002. Yeah. Were you kind of si simultaneously? No. Oh, he was finished? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I left the district in the fall of 2003, and he started his campaign about then. You know, they got got it. together. Got it. Very interesting. I think it's cool. I mean, if there's any place you can make serious impact it's at that level because the buck stops there to say or obviously that's where the most debate's going on but yeah um <clears throat> it, 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 it isn't politics uh, and education uh, are a great such so um, right uh, and, you know in the in the inertia of the system you know it right. wants to keep doing what it's always done for example you know you you ask about 
how you decide. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's some big issues that people in education think about, or at least our team thought about. Mm -hmm. For example, how schools are funded. It's a crazy, it's better now, but it's a mm -hmm. crazy way. It doesn't make any sense, but it's been done that way for a long time. And then people tack a little of this and a little of that on it. And so it's really a system that didn't work. So let's go see if we can make sense, mm -hmm. make sense of how schools are s funded. And so we tried that three times. It's a, that was a great question. We failed each time. It's easy to make a simple thing complicated. It's actually very, very difficult to make a complicated thing just simple right yep and uh i guess in, in that environment it's natural to we won't get into it to, to just debate back just to debate back because it's somebody saying it, instead of thinking of this is for the kids you know right. but but kudos <laughs> to you for jumping in that pit of lava <laughs> and trying right uh and mr koto uh was a great man to to be on a team with i'm sure the experience was uh was invaluable. Um, that uh, my next question is: What do you? What would you like to see? So, this is the three. Um, and this is just your personal opinion. You can't do anything thing, uh, as much now. But what would you? Before I get into uh, <coughs> to uh, Finland, Mr. Walsh, what would you like to see done in our education in twenty seventeen? Um, there's obviously millions of things we need. We're thinking, we're thinking K to twelve. Um, what would you like to, to see more of, you know? Perfect world, you yeah, had it your yeah, way. Yep. And, you know, it, it reminds me of Evergreen Valley High School. That that was a few years ago. But the idea there was, you know, it's a new millennium. It's a new high school. We haven't had any new high schools here. L people say high schools don't work very well. So what would a high school look like that worked well mm -hmm. um, in the 21st century? And so... Here's a golden opportunity. Let's create one. What does the literature say? What's missing? What should we be doing? And mm -hmm. so, you know, there are a lot of things you could focus on, but uh, the use of technology and education, which was just mm -hmm. happening at that time, mm -hmm. that um, education would be focused on students learning rather than teachers teaching, you know, uh, the student centered classroom, for example, that um, learning would be sort of interdisciplinary like life is, you know, you don't get up in the morning and do all your English things from eight to nine, and then do all your math things from nine to 10. Right. They you use all those tools to solve problems in the real world. So right. focus students on solving problems, not memorizing data. So, so all those things are really getting the prepare for the real world right. stuff. Right. And one now Roman now would appreciate what you just said. And it makes a whole lot of sense. And in the moment, right, we're always adverse to change. Why is there a humanities? Why we might as well get into that. I'm excited to get into it. We, we were so lucky to be a part of that process. I was a part of the first graduating class. For those of you guys who know, we're talking about Evergreen Valley High School, which is a uh, one of the first in the East Side Union that was built in 25 years, right? Since independence, I guess. Um, That's right. And I'm sure yeah, there's always going to be critics, right? But there was obviously a huge method to your madness, which is so cool to have this talk of why there was, at that time, it was unusual to be so specific of uh, we had a information technology um, kind of school within the school with its own principle. We had humanities if you wanted to focus on that. It was two others. I can't remember off the top of my head either. I don't expect you to. Science, <laughs> and technology, Science technology. Human performance. Human performance. I was in human performance. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, is it, which is about sort of biology and psychology, you know, what right. what makes humans tick. It would encompass this package. And of course, oh, man, I mean, parents are great. There's some, always your rare parents. I'm telling teachers are so patient. And being a coach kind of taught me too, holding tryouts. You got parents coming at you and all that stuff. Uh, so you can't always please them. But I think getting a chance to explain that bigger picture will actually make them go, wow, that was actually genius at the time. I think if there's another school, they should continue to kind of take that path. So I'm glad I asked uh, that question. Before we get into the meat of bones of Evergreen, sure. mo most of my questions, I just wanted to talk out and just, uh, debate is not even the right word, just talk out about uh, Finland, just to uh, kind of brush those up on it. And they're at the end, uh, down there, kind of with these rankings with the American system, they shoot up to the top. And the question is why? And you know, according to them, they did a few things. They eliminated uh, homework 
the increased uh, recess time. Uh, the last one will uh, come to me. Uh, they sh sh increased recess time. They shorten the schedule. Um, oh, they started later. They started later because the kids are half asleep, right? Mm -hmm. And those times. Um, and that is, that is great. Now, what spectrum? Because we got K all the way to 12. I mean, this is completely different factors. Or you're just general thoughts. I think there's obviously pros and cons of that. And America is not Finland, right? Right. Um, much larger execution for something like that. But when we see uh, countries doing things that are working for them, um, do you feel that it's something that you know we should be more open-minded to trying? Or what are your general thoughts on that? Um, well, it's kind of back to that old inertia thing. You yeah, know, yeah. We, we go, it's not just Finland, we, it's we lots of places. We go to Japan, we go to um, India, we go to Finland, um, and we find out things and we say, ha, they got a hand, and then we come back and we maybe try it for a little bit, but we don't shift. We just kind of keep on uh, working. Another thing about Finland is, um, they pay teachers really well, and they have high expectations of teachers, and teachers are well-trained in those schools. You know, it's more of a homogeneous society than ours, too. That It's not that there aren't um, other people in Finland, but most of the people are Finns. Mm -hmm. And so we have a country where people speak Very many languages, come from many cultures. Great point. And so we, and we have to we have answer to, to that. Work. You yeah. bet. You bet. We have to answer to that. It's got to be certain bilingual classes, right? Uh, where uh, that's not the right word. Um, where English is not a first language. Right. Right. Uh, totally necessary. So that is what I mean by it's a much uh, larger right. animal. Right. And then. When parents start getting on that, I want my kid to have more homework. Yes. Some teachers, superintendents, they fall to that pressure of pleasing them instead of trying to explain right. the bigger picture. Because sometimes explaining the bigger picture means they're out of their seat, right. and I, which which is good too. I mean, it's for the people, by the right. people, right. Uh, and so forth. And um, yeah, so th that's I always try to before jumping to that. Okay, cool. Yeah, excellent documentary. We should just do that. I try to see both sides because. Uh, parents are, I mean, working so hard, nine to five stuck. They're happy that Jimmy joined baseball because they get a little more time. If school ended earlier and they got to pick him up, that's daycare, right? That's a huge uh, right. problem for them. So not an easy job for you guys. Uh, uh, weird question uh, that, that you probably can't answer, Mr. Bell. Why, why aren't our, our teachers and educators put, uh, like, pay, payroll-wise, a little higher. I mean, that's not a question for you. That's a question for the people in, in, in pa power. But uh, has it always been that way? Yep. 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 Okay. I mean, you know, there are There's so many teachers there, out there listening going, yes. There are pockets here and there. But, you know, we have never been a place, you know, back in the 1800s, the school marm, you know, was a job for uh, a girl who hasn't gotten mm -hmm. married yet. And it, it, it wasn't serious business. Right. Um, right. And it's serious business now. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, but we, you know, money is always scarce. No, we're a rich country, but there's mm -hmm. always more things to do, more things to spend the money on than there, than there is money. You know, and as I remember when we were in Sacramento, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger said, we give them $50 billion, wouldn't you think that'd be enough? And right. it wasn't enough. Right. It seemed right. like a lot of money. Yeah. Cause, uh, and because and that was for, that was for the entire we're a huge state though. yes yes so no Arnold <laughs> and and, uh, and you got technology uh, uh, advancing uh, and so forth which but since then I've seen you know things kind of being answered to that which is uh, great I know uh, Leva and Quimby kind of putting together a uh, initiative at first they have to believe they called it Bulldog Bulldog uh, Tech Bulldog Tech and then now it's LSI building at Quimby Oak for those parents listening they're working on something I went over to my neighbor's house the other day and uh, he's his backyard is Quimby Oak and at the same time you, you know you're not going to make everybody happy he's got he, they're building a, a Quimby tech, mm -hmm. kind of like mm -hmm. tech, but it's being erected in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So his view is completely gone. He's got uh -huh. a huge building there. I mean, which, uh, I don't know what to, what to say to him, but at the same time, it's obviously for a great, uh, right. you know, cause, the, te the technology building. So, so that's something that obviously has to be answered uh, as well. But at the end of the day, all these, these, these future people who become significant leaders who do great things, um, they come from this root of the system, right? So it's... Uh, I mean, how it's not at somewhat of a priority is, uh, 
you know, pretty insane to me where we, we look at that. But now we got these big entrepreneurs who are saying school is not completely needed and this and that. I think absolutely the K to, to, to 12 level, that's not even debatable. I mean, just to, to generally uh, get get the mind going, right? You can argue university all you want. I mean, the, the, we got to admit, Mr. Welch, the student loan um, thing is, is, I feel like we're seeing it more in my generation and age. I'm not sure how it was. For you, did you have to take college loan to go to San Jose State at that time? I did, but whoa, it was much less Infl inflation. <laughs> it's nothing like what people a today APR, deal with. Yeah. yeah, and then banks get involved. Yeah. Apparently, you know, it's one of the only things that you can't um, declare bankruptcy on, even if you wanted to with student loans. You have to pay them back. So, uh, Obama did some type of loan forgiveness, right? I'm totally uneducated on this. Uh, yeah, he, they modified it. I, I, I'm not sure of the details either, but they modified it. But I think we're losing that now. Um, but if if uh, community college is free, uh, you know, there's first a year step. is yeah. just happened, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so for those of you who don't know, first year, um, actually, I remember I fact checked it because somebody kept asking me, it was October of this year that it was enacted that the first year of JC is now free in California. I don't know why, why not both, <laughs> but we start, we, we, it's a start with first year. I think um, uh, the entire state of New York, if you're a resident, is free, and then Tennessee, uh, if you're a resident. Uh, is is free just for JC. In New York, we're talking anything, right? Uh, and which is, which is a pretty cool yeah. step, right, in the right direction. Hopefully, we start to see more than that because it's hard enough. I mean, some people, right, are not as well off as others, and you're starting from ground zero. But to start from ground zero with a boulder on your shoulders up right. a hill, right? That's uh, that, who knows and, where that's going to take the future. Right? And we're falling behind. You know, you look just in this week in the Mercury News was an article about. Um, students graduating from high school and it's around um, college I mean uh, and it's around 30 percent of high school graduates which doesn't fill the jobs we have in our society that require a college degree and each year we lose a little bit more and so um, you know I, I've heard that argument about well look at all the great people there are in the United States so our school system must be working so that's one side of it the other side of it is Silicon Valley I hear people say why can't you educate people who can function effectively in our corporations? Why do we have to do it over when they get there? And right. that has to do with communicating well, working well in teams, working as problem solvers, mm. the things that don't always happen in a... Uh, the levels of bureaucracy. I'm so... This is why I wanted to have Mr. Balch on. We haven't even went through one question. And we've given so much uh, value. But no, you, you, you nailed it on, on that. And I read an article from uh, e Elon, and he had that type of thing. Was We have to admit there are levels of bureaucracy uh, within the workforce. And he says, uh, you don't have to ask your personal manager for permission to go up to another cross-department manager to ask him if you need to get something done in other words your hiring manager should not get angry at you said why did you go there and ask him for something without my permission right we know that's there in the nine to five world right so he says no none of that you that really messes up efficiency if you need to get something done you're more than welcome to go to the other department sorry manager and ask him if it's okay just ask him if it's okay with what maybe you might say no you're an idiot go back and talk to your manager uh but Examples like that really speed up efficiency, and you're right. That is a part of it too. Is how we, you know, how how we actually work with each other and throughout. We kind of have a what we think is the way a corporation functions, right? But it's right. it's up to uh, you, and that's what that's why we see more more startups and, and they're more you know aggressive mentality. But um, awesome, awesome stuff. So now let's narrow in and jump in a time machine, and I come to you. First off, so there's the high school principal, superintendent, area director. Uh, we know, we know, kind of. We'll get to superintendent. We know what a principal is. What is the difference? What is a uh, area, area director. director? Yeah. So the idea of the area director in this district was um, to get groups of st schools together, working together, um, sort of in proximity, um, geographic proximity, and come up with a plan working together to make 
education work better for kids, to improve their attendance, to improve their performance? How can we work together, because the district was pretty big, um, to do that? And Meaning so that, you communicating with all the principals? Yeah, and all okay. the teachers. Like We would have staff development experiences together. We would pick one another's brains. We would have um, nice. departmental meetings, like the math departments from four schools sitting down together, which nice. is uh, doable. How can we do this? together. What are you folks doing that we could be doing? That kind of thing. That was the idea. Still Let's, prevalent today? What? Still prevalent today? No, no. So pretty much it didn't work. Pretty, really? It, you know, we worked and we solved problems and we helped people out. That sounds but great. the whole idea of making student learning, um, taking it to a higher level, that uh, didn't work. So after about three years, they said, you know, this, this is, would go on during those staff development type days. Right? Yeah, well, all uh, every day. You right. Know, you, you, but on a district level, yeah. where they still happen now inside of Evergreen, this was more, hey, tell me about your side right. of town. Right. right. Right what you're seeing. Right. They just don't have area directors anymore. So you, you had the idea of there's the principal, there's a superintendent, and at the district office there are a few uh, assistant superintendents, you know, for personnel or... Right, right. Um, who would be in charge of that? Would it be superintendent with somebody um, above him? No, or would it be above him is the board, of, the board of trustees. The board of trustees, right. okay, okay, they're his boss. And they would, and they would be making these type of decisions. The area director, or no, there is no area director. I there was for a short period of time. Right, and then we decided not to. Who right. decided to to cut that type of thing? Is it the superintendent director? and the board? Got it, got it. I'll leave it at that. Right, uh, <laughs> but. I mean, there's a message to my, their madness on keeping it within the schools. I mean, it is tough enough having the math teachers at just X school communicate with each other the way you just described right. and so forth. It never hurts to, within a region, within a district, um, talk to each other. But um, There's constantly that question about how can we get better? Right. How can we get better in math? How Mr. Funk, we... you're next on the show. He's already committed, so how you, can, you better how believe can... I'm going to ask that. How can I, I won't drop any names? <laughs> how can we learn from one another? Um, right, right, right. You know th that's what we're supposed to do, and that's, so that's what it's about. finding that how that happens. And you, you know, you talked about the Evergreen School District. So mm -hmm. you know, Eastside has um, seven feeder districts. Mm -hmm. So communicating with that, so the eighth grade or the middle school people are synced up with the high school, so they're preparing the, their students for what the high school teachers expect. You, it's amazing, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Right. So we're They're not preparing aligned. them for something how do we, we're expecting. How something. do we align them? Yeah, we right. have to talk. And by seven feeder, you mean uh, Evergreen yeah. Elementary School District, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ellen Rock, Oak Ellen Grove, Rock. Yeah. Franklin McKinley. And you line up those puzzle pieces, it will be far more efficient. Right, right. right. Uh, and it's hard to do. It sounds, yeah, it sounds very complex. So if there's a way to... To, to, to sink it in, yeah, sounds like a lot of, uh, oh, it doesn't have to, it, there's got to be a way, but at least you guys had attempted that, right? There's I mean, a, an organization now called Eastside Alliance, and its whole purpose is to do that, is to build this K to 12, actually K to 16, including mm -hmm. San Jose State, which is part of it, about how can we work together to make it work better for everybody, and they're working hard and still hard. Right, right, and that doesn't mean that K through 16 means we're going to be able to have one way and the only way. There's no one size fits all solution, but just having communication in line, probably more efficient for learning right. curricula, right? A very cool idea. And I think those type of things should be brainstormed more. I don't even think we ever reach that level of organizational thinking until you get to your level and the superintendent and so forth. But um, very cool ideas. And you never know who's listening out there. It could be. A superintendent from Detroit who says, well, you know what, I got to bring that up. We're going right. to try that. You know, that's why I think this stuff is uh, so important. So now the animal, my lovely bias as a cougar, as a, uh, a first graduating class uh, and being a part of that, taking advantage of being a guinea pig during trying different bell schedules and uh, that whole experience. Um, I show up and I say, Mike Welch, we haven't had a high school in 25 years. I want you to be uh, in charge of the team uh, that starts that. Where the heck do you start? Uh, and I'm talking, let's get nitty gritty. Do you, you meet up with, uh, are you involved in architecture all the way? Um, where did you start? I mean, what was your honest? It's a great question. Yeah. So 
architecture, um, there was a, before I took the job um, as planning principal, there was already a plan for the school, an architectural plan. Now, meaning uh, the site was chosen and the, the 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 plans were drawn. Now, having the plans drawn and having the building built are two different things. <laughs> so, um, execution. The idea means nothing. Execution is yeah, the game, right? Yeah. So, and you know, just as it happens in your house every day, mm -hmm. something goes wrong on the site every day and you have to go down and figure out what went wrong. And there's the architect and there's the builder and then there's the school district, which in that, Division, time, yep. that time was me. Right. And so what's, How do you what's the problem? What do we need to do? So there was a whole lot of that. And then, you know, there's a curriculum in the East Side Union High School District already for the school. So you didn't have to create a curriculum so it was there and then there's standards that the state had what they expect students to uh, know and be able to do and that was there so and then actually have facility wise locker right. rooms for pe right every detail and right? and part of my job i hadn't thought of it before but furniture you know in a school in a high school um 250,000 square feet there are right no, keep going. I didn't mean is to it cut upside you off. Down? Oh, I just wanted to, to, oh. to show this. It is upside yeah. down, uh, but I wanted to show th uh, this area first. What I could do is I'll take a picture and I'll add it to this video later. But continue on. You were saying in a school. So you, there are all these. Thank you to Janet. She grabbed this from the old garage and brought of Evergreen. <laughs> I'll take pictures later and throw it in the video and everything. Uh, sorry, carry so, on. Sure. So you desks. Well, what kind of desks? Well, what should a desk look like in a 21st century school? Mm. Well, what did the old-fashioned, you know, on and on. Bike racks. Well, what do the bike racks look like? Well, safety. What about what about signage? Um, you know, how do we answer that and stay in budget? Right, right. <laughs> um, and then science. I'm not a science person, so you know what it's like in a science classroom. But there is, you know, chemistry and physics and biology and physiology, and they right. all have different needs. And so, oh my gosh, we got to figure out equipping all these science rooms. So that went on for. Two years, um, then there's getting the students um, enrolled, you know, a new school. It's not automatic, and there, you have to get a number from the state did to you be pull a school. Did you pull it uh, back to science? How, how did you answer that question? Did you bring in consultants? You know, this, that is what, could, uh, this is what we did. Right. Um, I, there was a, I had been the principal at Santa Teresa, and there was a great science department chair there, Gary Melching. And so I said, so, Gary, what if we found some money and you got – two or three of your colleagues and you had some time okay. and you went through this and you created a plan to equip the science labs. That's so cool. And he said, whoa, that's a big job. And I yeah. said, well, I certainly can't do it. And that's why they chose you because then you, you had already built this network. Right. Being here so long. And so he did get his, uh, there were other department chairs, different people and they came back and they said well what about this and we'd have a discussion and finally what was his name one more time gary melching thank you gary you're very nice yeah, to was this. Great. the thing is nobody takes credit but he knows in his mind he walks in and he goes same way i think about the colors of mascot we'll get to that you go nobody's gonna believe me but i was a part of this you know and it sounds kind of lame but it's such a cool thing when you see it you know uh and and carry on i shouldn't shouldn't have cut you off and then it was on to the next thing um enrolling all the students hiring yeah. the teachers you, you talked about that before about the great teachers that were there and really the way we did it is i talked a little bit before about the vision was this was going to be a different kind of school this was going to be a 21st century school so we put that out there we said you know it's about a hundred kids working in in a dis, interdisciplinary way with four teachers who work together. So you know what that screams to them though? We're open to change. Yes. Which for some of them who've probably been there twenty years plus, they're like a breath of fresh air. Right. I want to be a part of that. Right. Well, some did and some didn't. Right. Right. But at least um, my opinions aren't going to be completely blocked. But it seems like they're going to need our help. Right. You know what I mean? And that's actually th that'll attract more people. Right. That that builds. Exactly why area director type thing we talked about. It well, that's, that's how we staffed the school. We right. said, this is the plan. If you want to be part of it, apply. And so um, people applied. How was the demand? Was it huge? I want to do that. Well, it was, was more than we had places. And you needed, yeah. yeah. Which is the, which was the, the question you wanted to answer right. at that time. So uh, you, got, you got a no local athletics, but... Uh, this is the man that stacked them up. Well, obviously he's looking at resumes at this point. Um, but 
Then we have a meeting. You probably don't even remember this, Mr. Welch, but it was at Quimby Oak Middle School's gym. But I'm at the level where I finished my freshman year already at Mount Pleasant. But now we did portables first. Half were in Silver Creek. See, I remember half was at Mount Pleasant. But when it came to that athletics, um, you know, you're a sophomore, you're self-conscious, you're nervous. But this is this is a new beginning for you too to join athletics. You walk in, and Mr. Welch had them line all lined up. And what I didn't know at the time is these were legendary coaches like in everyone. We had uh, Coach Quinette, who had Piedmont Hills named after him. But it, what better man in the big picture of things to take on a job like that? And then you had Dennis Fernandez, who absolutely changed my life. Don't get me started on what he did for me. Uh, he just got the job at a retirement for the freshmen and sophomores back at Evergreen. Great. Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, he didn't even tell me. He told me to show up. I thought he was going to be for Andrew Hill. And now we'll, uh, we'll get to that later. But I, I'm, my schedule is finally flexible, so I might start helping him out there. And I know he can he can bring a state title to Evergreen, you know. But um, And then so on and so forth as far as the women's uh, divisions. You guys just pick the best of the best. And, and at the time, I didn't even uh, notice that. But, I mean, well, the question I was going to ask you is how did you do that? But now I realize – you're just doing your job. You're just reading right, resumes. Right, right. And, and it wasn't just me. There was a team of us. Okay, tell me about that. Was well, it? so um, parents, um, other teachers, uh, other administrators were part of a team. And so we, you know, you get the resume. Was that the pro code to get parents involved? I love that. Yeah. Okay. Were this, did they do that with independence? And they're building that? I don't know. See, it takes a leader to just go, no, I think that's important. Let's do it. Right? Because sometimes when there's not a handbook, you don't have to just double check is you just want to get get the job done and get it done right and that's that's so cool to me so that's that's why i got some type of phone call where uh i'm literally across the street from evergreen seventh and eighth grade and then we move away right when it opens further back but i'm not sure how they got a hold of me but i know the people to this day that are probably on here too it was a amy chu a few kids a year younger than me including me and others and we meet at the fire department and we what, what committee did did we call it Sunday. school site council school site council and we met i think in quimby's library once or twice and then but we met at the fire department and uh, i don't want to say it locked us in a room but it was a few hours and we just debated out and narrowed down colors and then we narrowed down uh, the name of the school even yes the name of the school and then the last one was mascots and i think um as a I feel like it was very early on. It wasn't even built yet. I want to say ninth or eighth grader or tenth grader. It was my first taste of a, a kind of open, not debate, nice kind of politics. My parents didn't even know I went to that meeting, but just just for fun. You know, it was a very, it was a nice energy, uh, open debate. I remember we narrowed it down for the record. And I think Ryan Brennan, uh, Ms. Chu, all them, Natalie, uh, who was in there with me was I think it came down to we had two different sets of colors and then on mascots we had uh, Titans Mr. Walsh left the room he just said all right you guys figure it out uh, Titans and uh, and the colors came from the Sharks and it was Titans and then we narrowed it down to Cougars or Mountain Lions because they're indigenous to the area the same way Lobo essentially means wolf right or was a coyote one of those two wolf a uh, wolf yeah and uh and that's really where it came about. Uh, I was pushing for Titans, didn't get my way. I tried. I lived. I was I pushing lived for that. owls. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was the They're wise. Well. Yes. Yes. And but the colors we all agreed upon. I remember the only thing I brought up were along the lines of the uh, sharks. They kind of mesh from the Carolina Panthers to mm-hmm. sharks. But that that was so cool. That and it wasn't just me. It was a, a lot of us. There's a lot of us there. And so that was just one way we didn't even know Mr. Welch was organizationally delegating all the responsibilities he had uh, ahead of him, right? So very interesting. Okay, be honest. You cannot be a leader and make these crucial decisions without getting uh, backlash. What did Aristotle say? The only way to avoid criticism is do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. Right. (laughs) it's it's such a such a huge task to get on that and there's always the naysayers who will state problems without offering solutions and then you're just complaining when you're doing that was that tough for you was it pretty smooth and easy well in fact um i think the charge my charge was to bring 
I can't remember if it was two or three names for the school mascots colors to the board mm -hmm. and the board ultimately decided but awesome. but they took all of the recommendations of the school site council yeah, yeah. and you know in in answer to your question i think uh not all you know some leaders would just make those decisions on on their own but if you go to the board and you say we want to name the school Evergreen Valley High School, and somebody says, well, I think that's a dumb idea. And you said, well, you know, we spent the last four months talking about this, and we included students and teachers and parents and people from the community, and we had a process, and this is what those folks came up with. Well, then somebody will say, it's oh, maybe you're fun. right. <laughs> maybe that's a good that's, idea. So it was pretty much that you saved all that debating by right. making it about the kids were actually going to use it. Right. Which it's probably saved it's you a their, lot of their work. school. Right. Which, in fact, would delay the whole process and nothing uh, gets done. That was, that was wise on your part to uh, see a smart person that can find a way to avoid the conflict early and still get it done, right? It takes a much more diplomatic, wise person to uh, not to avoid those type of unnecessary arguments instead of somebody who's just great at arguing, right? Um, so that, that, that's very cool. Uh, and I'm glad we had this. So that's... Uh, I know what an area director is now. Um, in general, anything else a Compass superintendent uh, as far as responsibilities besides the general overseeing of principals and so forth, because there's assistant superintendents. Is there any core group, uh, you know, I guess, I don't want to say outside the area of administration, but as far as curriculum goes, I know you yourself were not a superintendent, something I'll ask Mr. Funk too, but just off the top of your head um what is their typical core day to, uh, day to day as far as response uh, responsibilities just on a general level i'm not sure what you're asking a superintendent yeah. what is his core function uh within the education system well the superintendent's job is to manage it all mm. and so um you know sort of like the president and the president's cabinet mm. um then the assistant superintendents um manage parts of it and then they bring their recommendations alongside the board of trustees right. so then the superintendent meets in his cabinet which is those people together regularly and they talk about the important issues for example building evergreen valley high school is something that sort of happens in the business office because it's a business issue and then there's a director of of facilities and on a day-to-day -day basis he's the person who lets the contracts who deals with the contractors who brings up the issues and so but but the superintendent is the boss so mm. if they're in the building they say look we found out you know somebody's uh, got to make a decision yeah, yeah it, it, the final decision mm. well the final decision is actually all the the board, but mm -hmm. then they would come to the superintendent and the superintendent would come with a recommendation to the board and they would take it or not take it. Michelle, when you look at something like the California high school exit exam, when they we finally got rid of it now, when it came about or when they did finally get rid of it, um, is that at the Joe Cotto State Assembly education level that we were talking about? Or is that something that obviously they're going to want the feedback from? superintendents from all around California who gets rid of how did he it's about that's about politics right right and so politics is in the, those are important decisions in school district but it you know it happened there's a state department of education right and so it's a big bureaucracy in Sacramento and there's a in the legislature there is a, a senate and a, an assembly mm -hmm. education committee mm -hmm. and depending on which way the wind is blowing I think you know there's, actually, um, it's, there's a specific education committee as well on the state right, level right um so they would have to uh quarrel right. that out the verbal quarrels to to get rid of it um i'm glad uh, i'm glad i don't know the thinking these, these are just your personal opinions uh we, we glad they got rid of it or you think that's needed or well you know, yeah, this is what i think i sure. think that the people of california expect some accountability mm -hmm. when they say how is it going um they don't they want to hear more than we're doing the best we can show us some data they want to measure it right and so then we've kind of learned that one measure isn't really adequate, you know, right. to measure much of anything. It's right. certainly nothing as complicated as the student's education. So right. we need to have multiple measures. And so then the more you get, you know, a lot of the public just... Mm. 
just tell me, is it working or not working? <laughs> just show me the numbers. And so, well, you say, well, it's Give me a quick solution. It's complicated. Right. And so then I think we're moving now to more toward the multiple measures thing. And so something like the exit exam or, or that kind of exam would be uh, one issue. Uh, so what are the other issues? You know, how many people are graduating? How many people are going to college? How many people are taking AP courses? SAT. Yes, yes. Which they went, uh, right after I left, they, they went from 1600 being perfect score to 22 something. And I heard, I just do my research preparing for the Evergreen uh, interview. They dropped it back down again uh, in the past two, three years. I don't know if you're aware, Mr. Welch. Not that that matters. The 22 kind of, it's hard enough passing the damn, right. <laughs> the damn thing. But um, that's another gauge. But that gauge is more for colleges and for right. entry level right. and stuff like that. Um, Interesting if, if they would just be able to have access to that data. I'm not sure what happened since, but somebody convinced them to right. drop that right. <laughs> measurement. Um, and, and interesting how that, that falls into, um, I mean, I won't open that can of worms, but I always wondered how often when it comes to real estate, the values of areas are measured by the number one concern of parents are how are the schools? Of course, they the, are. the attribute of, and I think that's where it really starts to get weird for uh, for politics too, because the the better or lower, uh, you know, exam scores immediately devalues the area. I mean, how is that? Should we, we shouldn't even open that? <laughs> how is that a criteria? It's only one criteria of many crime, all those type uh, of things, but. It's obviously considered, right? Just because parents care where their kids get their education. Absolutely. Uh, I just mean to uh, an, another one. Where do you see the future of private versus public? Because the number one complaint, I, I think, personal bias again, Quimby Oak and Shibuya are one of, in my opinion, one of the, the greatest, like, I feed our middle schools when it comes to athletes. But the coach's number one concerns is anytime the kid's any good when he comes out of middle school, He's going to immediately go West Catholic Athletic League. And I can't begin to tell you how many stars have come from Shibuya, Quimby, but never made it to a public school. As my question is, privates were always prevalent along your timeline that you've seen, or, or have they become from the 70s to now so more and more prevalent as the years have increased, right? Could that shrink the... Yeah, no, I think that has always been an issue. Now... Charter schools is what's the difference, I think, since the 70s or something. But Sorry, but um, private schools, there are more now, but then there are a lot more people now as well. So I think that idea, and if you're a star athlete, you might well wind up there. Although Oak Grove High School yeah. had oh, you, 30 years of great. terrific football teams, and so it's possible. And at, uh, at Independence, we had great uh, facilities for swimmers and, and I, I couldn't and, agree more and wrestling. Yep, yeah, and that was the uh, the athletics probably wasn't the most the, uh, the best example because yeah, and anyone who's true to themselves in their hometown, they'll always stay right, and they want to, they want to represent right. put their own place on the map. But in terms of education, uh, I, I've heard it being whispered around that there's always some type of obviously you're, you're not affiliated with them anymore but what is the state of i see a concern of the state of budget for east side Union high school district and they continue to be reduced one thing that's been kind of going viral on facebook is gosh it always comes back to politics i'm trying to stay away from politics it always comes back that about um i've had a, a teacher on here who's saying that he's coming out of pocket for school supplies and stuff like that and there's concerns that you know budgets are are shrinking do you think that's more due to uh you know the power decision makers at b or because the competition of private schools because they're a business that's not right they're a bit let's right. let's be real here right um do you foresee if that does become a problem that maybe they have to not, have, not allow having as many charter schools because what is the regulation behind a private school do you know it's whatever they want to do really right well not you know, you have to go through a process. You have to, if you're the charter operator, you have to complete a set of forms um, okay. showing what you're going to do, why you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, what it's going to cost. Okay. And then it's sort of evaluated at the local level, at a local school district, and they can approve it or deny it. And if they deny it, you can go to the um, county and mm -hmm. 
plead your case, and you can even go to the state. So there are some things in between. Mostly public school districts aren't in favor of a lot of, of uh, charters, mm. partly for the reason you say, right. and pretty soon it starts to erode the budget. But I think the current budget issue has a little bit more to do with, you know, after the the Great Recession and uh, and recovery from that, mm. um, then finally there was more money. And so there were a couple of years when um, when the state was sort of making it up to school districts and pumping money back in where there hadn't been money before. Mm -hmm. And so school districts started reinstating programs, but those were sort of one-time monies, actually maybe two-time monies. And so then those two-time monies are gone, and now there's more money than there was before, mm -hmm. but not at the same level as after. And so now school districts are having to adjust mm -hmm. to, to... And recalibrate, yes, right? Yes, exactly. To, to that. So they're coming in more lump uh, sums. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and I wonder where that's going to go. Do these uh, privates, uh, are you aware if there's any regulation that um, they're, they're probably audited as well? Their numbers of the private uh, schools are looked at, their budget and so forth. But uh, it, it, the state doesn't pay money to the private schools. So right, so they can kind of... They have their own boards that do that. That audit. It's them, not man. public information. Those are private. Interesting. Interesting. And I'm all for, for that. If you're a private institution and you're doing it well, that's uh, great. But um, at the same time, you, there's some level of you also have to look out for your fellow man who cannot afford, uh, uh, you know, afford the private school. And I'm just curious where we're at that that's not shrinking as much. Obviously, from what I learned from you a second ago, it's not because of that. It's far more uh, because of, of the economies of scale, the way things are going. California is a huge state, the way we can distribute it, according to Financial Times and so forth. But we're going to go right into the rapid fire. I, can you believe an hour and one minute? Can you believe that <laughs> already? But uh, as far as value, I'm so happy right now. I think we just laid down some very cool stuff. So I want to pick this gentleman's brain is because he's done so much and taken zero credit and behind the scenes and spent his entire life over 35 years um, just, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, I obviously, he, he just explained that it wasn't just him, it took a lot of help, but having the mind to delegate that and put the right people in charge of such an important job is uh, very cool. So I want to say thank you for that. In case You're welcome. Anybody's ever seen it, but this is, this is the fun part. I'll do a little, I call it rapid fire, but you can take your time to answer. I, pl I pulled out um, a bunch. So my first one, uh, Mr. Welch, uh, tell me about... Um, a failure or what you thought at the time was a failure in your life that ended up kind of, you know, not until you could look back to say, oh man, that was meant to happen. It kind of set me on my way uh, or any failure, you know, you thought it was a failure time and it ended up being success. Um, I always throw the easy ones at you. Sure. <laughs> sure. I guess um <clears throat> many failures, many failures in each time you learn and um, many successes as well. You know, in some ways for me, Evergreen Valley High School, even though I, I love it and I love doing it, it was a failure yeah. because the vision is no longer there. Um, and for me, the vision was important. Mm -hmm. I've gone on to use that in other places. For example, in the Santa Clara Unified School District, the 49ers STEM Leadership Institute exists. Um, and it's very much, I work uh, mm -hmm. closely in developing that. Yes. It's very much like what we tried to do at uh, Evergreen, and we were. I could take that experience. I guess in the final analysis, what, what I think about that is the issue is to try mm -hmm. you know to engage to do things and sometimes they're gonna work perfect. you only learn when you make mistakes yeah sometimes right. they're gonna work perfect very seldom and sometimes they're gonna be difficult and you're gonna have to dig your way out of them and sometimes there's some place in between just keep doing it you know mm -hmm. and keep trying it again and trying it again yep it's a part of nature there the baby only learns to walk or stand after it falls on its face about 20 right. times and right. then it stands up. I love it. Um, and this one, just a personal opinion, when you think of the word successful, uh, it's a loaded word, uh, who's the first person that comes to mind? There's no right answer for this. It's just in your opinion and why. Uh, 
You know, I, I was. Don't a, me a name. I don't even. Know. <laughs> I was a history teacher, and uh, so um, one person that comes to mind who didn't get a lot of credit is Harry Truman. Mm -hmm. um, he he had um, great success. He was a humble guy who. Um, who did the right thing, who, who thought hard, wasn't worried about what everybody was going to say, um, just stuck with his conviction, put on the front of his desk, the mm. buck stops here. Um, here. He's a successful guy, a hero. My, my daughter, um, who's teacher of the year in her um, school district and who's a parent of a disabled child and who's a, uh, a pastor in her church for... Shout out to her. What district is that, Ms. Uh, she's in the Union School District. Union School District. Okay. Um, she's a, a hero. She manages an incredible amount in her life and does it gracefully and successfully. That was beautiful. Uh, President uh, Truman. Yeah, I mean... The, the greatest always look back that you can't, you can't always worry about. We're all self-conscious to some point, but you can't. I stopped a long time ago caring what people think because I remember hearing a, a quote that I know the quickest way to failure is caring about what everybody thinks. Now, I don't know the key to success, but I know the key to failure, and that's uh, trying to please everybody. Right. That's exactly what it was. Well, I got uh, one other success story. Yeah, Why please, please. Mr. Cotto, uh, my former Joe boss. Cotto. He he is an amazing person about I gotta meet him about about, be, about success about working with people and having people follow him and and believe in him. Everybody can't do that, and I'm not sure quite how he does it, but he can walk into. I remember when the East Side subsequent to his, what do you call that charisma? What do yeah, you call charisma. That? Yeah. But it's even more than charisma, you know. Um, you know, charisma of people who wow yeah. you. But people would say, that guy, he is a wonderful person. And he remembers your kids' names. And yeah. he, I, I don't know. I, one time I when there was a terrible issue, I don't know what the issue was at the, at the east side. And the boardroom was filled with angry people. And the next day in the paper, it said, well, the former superintendent would have opened up one of the gym and served cookies and punch. And by the end of the evening, everyone would be happy. And so that he was that is that kind of guy. He's still right, doing that. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think it's more a skill where it doesn't mean he's the charisma and so forth, but it's literally knowing uh, every single person is different, but somehow that person just finds a way to yeah. uh, connect connect with yes. each in, in in their own different way, yes. Yes. and having that sixth sense of how to do that. Um, but awesome. And let's see. I'll just give that. Uh, question um let's see oh uh this is a good one um what is um what is a book that you most often given as a a gift um and uh you obviously you know you don't have to go too far into why because the person's gonna have to be a spoiler that person's gotta read the book right uh, if any you know it's a um that's an interesting question a book i gave to someone recently was um Al Franken's book, um, Giant of the Senate. Well, and it's a very inspiring book uh, about Al Franken. I've been watching him a lot lately. And now, okay. <laughs> all of a sudden, Al Franken oh. is not quite such a giant of the Senate. And uh, But um, that's interesting. One of my favorite books of all times is a, a book called Pillars of the Earth, which is a sort of a historical novel about um, sort of the... Um, early middle ages right. and a, a wonderful book and I loved reading it and thinking about it you know I, until I read that book it didn't occur to me that poor you know unless you were rich or royal or something in those times when you went someplace you had to walk mm -hmm. that was it you had to walk and right so everything got planned out about how how, how far you could walk in a day right um, great book simple things right yeah. pillars of, of the earth and then uh, the giant of the Senate, Al Franken, awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, so this, when I say morning rituals now, I'm not talking about exercise that same, same thing. Just for simple reasons, uh, first sixty, we're creatures of habit, right? First sixty yeah. minutes, you wake up. What do you typically? Every day is not the same. What's your typical um, routine? Uh, I have, I have one. It doesn't work every day, of course. Never, never nothing. Never. But. Um, <clears throat> 
this is how it works at our house. <clears throat> you know, our kids are grown up and gone and have their yeah. own families now. So I get up. My job is to make the coffee. Yeah. Then I go out and get the paper. Now, none of my kids even take a paper anymore. Right, right. We take a real paper and two on Sunday. And so I bring the paper and the coffee into the bedroom, wake my wife up, and we read the paper together, talk about um, what's in the news, often get mad about what's in the news. That, that's one of the reasons. Now, I, I mean, um, slightly different uh, time. And first of all, you reading anything that's not a screen and that being the first thing is probably more mentally healthy than anything possible. My only... Fear to add to that is the reason you and Janet immediately get into a debate. This is just my opinion. Is my fear of what's really happened to KTVU to the local things, and that's again watching Bowling for Columbine and so forth. Is I want you to try to count Mr. Welch tomorrow morning's paper on how many of the headlines had to do with some sort of fear. I'm not saying it's all the time. Obviously that. You know, it's because of ratings and so forth, but I feel like it can really get taxing on the mind of my local parents. They get angry. I walk by and I, I turn it off every time because we're in a world now, and this is, you taught me so much, uh, is when I made that switch like three to four years ago and where I'm in charge of ex everything that goes in here, the paper was all you had during that time, but nowadays... This is going to be downloaded into a podcast after YouTube. Uh, on your next drive to Walnut Creek, Pleasanton, you can listen to KTVU or you can listen to Roman and Mike Welch talk about the education system in Eastside Union. And I feel like since I've done that, you know, those hours fly and it gives you such a, a depth of educational. And, and no, no knock to you, sir. All I'm saying is uh, suggesting that um, there's a whole universe of things out there as technology is changing, right? Which you've encouraged for so many um, youth as well that um, I've personally told myself, sadly, no more uh, local TV news. And Paper still uh, fine, depending on what it is. Evergreen Time or Mercury? Mercury. Okay, well, yeah, that's debate. <laughs> so that's why you and Janet right. get into it about. Uh, but I might be wrong. In tomorrow's paper, I'm going to text Mr. Welch. If there's a positive ad somewhere, or positive story, excuse me, Roman is wrong. And I'll be the first one to admit that I was wrong. But do you agree on some level? H1N1, killer bees. Um, this person, it's, it's 5 a.m. They're talking about somebody who got stabbed or killed uh, but at the same time in my opinion we're at the safest time in history alive think of it when it was the wild wild west people would pay for their tab shoot the other guy and take off on their horse right if you look at a grand scheme of things please disagree with me if you disagree that we are safe but all of our attention goes to the one fatality that happened here when given, yes, we should be looking at that, but there's so many positive things. How are you about that aura of how positivity versus negativity affects the mind? Does that ever cross your mind? Of you course it does. Okay. Of course okay. it does. So you have examined that realm. Yeah. Well. And, you know, um, and I agree about <laughs> KTVU. I, it, I don't want to watch it at night because it's just one right after another of those terrible things. But that was that was wrong. I mean, KTVU and San Jose Mercury a little different credibility. <laughs> right. That's like the Inquirer, and uh, right. <laughs> but sorry for that that rant. But I just felt for whoever's listening that um, anyone, if it was you know my mother's age or so forth, I would just highly encourage you uh, if there's something you like, you know, it's like Pillars of the Earth. Just go on uh, on YouTube and see if there's somebody talking about subjects that you know it's cooking uh, that you could completely learn out. Uh, you know, education's the the topic here, so I couldn't help myself but to uh, imagine that. Uh, how rude of me though! I blab after the Mercury with Janet. Then it's off for the day. That's then, the morning Then it's ritual. talk over the day. That's like, the first 60 like minutes. Like, who's going to make dinner tonight? Yeah. Like that. Okay, i got to learn from you. I've been married a year. i got a lot to learn yeah. for him. How long have you and Jenna been married? 51 years. Man, 51. Yeah. That, that's awesome. And the question was, your morning ritual for 60 minutes a day, and you asked that. We'll wrap, the, we'll wrap it up with uh, this uh, la last one here. Um, I gave you well, I had two more. I gave you uh, 24 hours, Mike Welch. You probably been in these situations a lot, but you have to give a TED talk tomorrow, Mike. You don't have Mr. Welch. You don't have much time to prepare. Obviously, you're going to go with the go-to subject that you know you could talk about all day from 35 years of your career. 
Um, or I could be wrong. It could be a pillars of the earth. What what, what would you pick for your your TED talk? Um, uh, Maybe um, um, we we like to um, travel, and so I might pick travel. And what would I talk about in travel? It's not just um, you know visiting the Taj Mahal or the um, the pyramids. It's um, visiting other cultures and um, seeing and living with and understanding how other people live day to day, Mm -hmm. how they see the world, how we see the world, and sort of learning from that. And it's a sort of, I think, Mm -hmm. what everybody needs to do. If you can't travel, you can do it in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But to sort of... um, Educate and be empathetic to other cultures. Right. Right. So... You know, as you just said, the world can be sort of filled with hate and mistrust and dislike and all of that. Or you could try to reach out and understand who who are you? Help me mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. Um, how you think that way. Mm-hmm. And you can do that. You know, mm-hmm. some people, I think, they just pay lip service to it. And I'm not sure they really want to um, make the effort. Yes. Yeah. And so that's that's what my TED Talk. And I would tell some stories about, you know, visiting a house in China and what I felt about that. I love it. Go, you, could, you could pull up the slideshows and then when Australia comes up, you can simply say, this is Australia. Or you can say, from your knowledge, of course, actually in Australia, they do this. It'll blow people's mind. Right. I love it. I love it. You just smash these. I thought these were going to be tough questions. We'll leave it with the, the last one uh, here. Dang it. Okay, two more. Two, after this one, start with your favorite quote. I'm such a quote nerd. That would be a tough question for me, but you had to narrow down one. I got I got mine. Well, this is, um, this is um, my own quote. It gets me in trouble sometimes. But, no, I really want it. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's two kinds of people in the world. Those who say yes and those who say no. Those who say yes are better. I love it. I love it. And, uh, yeah, I remember um, shout out, uh, to Sean. I, ch- I changed my way of thinking. I started reading something that, oh, the greatest C- CEOs say no to a lot of things all day. I don't know why I just randomly chose today, but one of my good friends, Sean, was like, you know, she was she said it respectfully. You know, I, I disagree. I'm, I'm more about saying yes and and going with the flow of it and i was in that mindset first then i came to that no i gotta be stern ceo right for my parents and then obviously hindsight's 2020 and i completely agreed with her and i reached out to her and i said you know what she's like how do you remember that was six years ago i was just saying but it's very important to say yes and you and you want to say no you then the next question is how can i reframe this how can i make this a yes right right and uh what am i really saying no to right And, and reassess Yourself. And sometimes it's you're saying no to putting yourself out there, to participating, to engaging. And that's where I, right. I want you to engage. Yes, yes. I have that too. Is there's so many things you say no to because we're thinking we're being focused on the goal. I said that yesterday, but really sometimes that, that shiny object in our peripheral is actually there for us. And we miss out on those opportunities if we set. Goals are so important. You add up goals and have them written down and so forth. That's the first thing I've kind of been open to change my mind about is sometimes that person asks you that little thing for a reason. Just go to that event, right? Just go to those. You get what I'm saying? Kind of and even though sometimes being completely laser focused is the greatest. Okay, now I promise this will be my last. Advice to... Only because it's Mr. Wells. Advice to probably my favorite question. Uh, back to the time machine. You can hop up, hop in. You get to whisper something at the 25, 30 year old assistant, Mrs. Serena, said yesterday. Uh, Mike Wells. You get to hop in a time machine. You get to say something to him, and you hop back in, and you're out of here, right? Um, what, what would you give him? Uh, what would you say to him? Shoot, I could say a lot of things. I guess one of the things I would say about uh, sort of your life is, you know, when your grandfather or my father was right. uh, lived here, um, you you know, you went to work for the railroad and you worked for 25 years and they gave you a gold watch and you retired and you moved out on the farm. It's not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a career isn't something out there it's something in here and so your whole life 
you have to keep reinventing yourself um, for the next job, for the next challenge, for the next, you know, we talk, this didn't happen in schools before. We talk about creating new meaning. What the heck does that mean, create new meaning? Well, you know, Elon Musk has made a career out of creating new meaning. And so then I would say, you know, look at your skills, look at your knowledge, look at where you want to go. Constantly keep working at developing yourself because that's the career. And so when the next thing comes along or when you actually invent the next thing, mm -hmm. you're ready to do that. And don't just, don't just create a new business. Uh, the word you just use, like Elon, create the next best thing that creates its own universe underneath itself, right? I don't think anybody's going to top that. I'm going to have this episode 86. I don't think anybody's going to top that. Um, this is Mike Welch. I'm Roman Nahal. I want to say thank you guys so much. I'm not even going to say I hope this brings you value. I know that it brings you value, so I wanted to have uh, this gentleman on, uh, somebody I look up to as well. Thank you so much. So thank much. you. I thank appreciate you. it. Can't wait to chop this one up. And uh, happy holidays, guys. Be safe out there, uh, and we'll have this up soon on uh, YouTube. Take care.